A very good day, everyone, and here is a for you with me, Vanessa. Indonesian workers hold protests over emergency regulation on jobs creation law. Thousands of workers rallied in Indonesia's capital, Arjun Parliament, to reject a presidential decree that critics say would erode employees' rights and environmental protections. President Joko Widodo issued the emergency decree last month, replacing a controversial jobs law in Southeast Asia's largest economy, a move some legal experts say violated the court ruling. The Constitutional Court had ruled the 2020 jobs creation law was flawed, saying there had been insufficient public consultation before the law was passed. It ordered lawmakers to complete a renewed process by November. Its deputy speaker said the jobs creation law, revising more than 70 other laws, had been welcomed by foreign investors or cut in red tape. Parliament will assess the legal standing of the decree in the current sitting. A group of Indonesians asked the Constitution Court to carry out a judicial review of the regulation. Indonesian police on trial for negligence over last year's deadly football assault. An Indonesian court began a trial of a handful of police and match of officials charged with the negligence over their alleged roles last year in one of the world's deadly soccer stadium stampedes. The court in Surabaya heard the charges against three police officers, a security official and a match organizer who each face a maximum prison sentence of five years if convicted, as parents and families of victims rallied outside the courthouse. The disaster in which 135 people died occurred at a match in October at the Kanjuruan Stadium in Malang, East Java, and prompted widespread questions about safety standards and the use of tear gas, a crowd control measure banned by soccer's global governing body, FIFA. The commission said locked doors, an overcapacity stadium and failure to properly implement its safety procedures exacerbated the death toll. Rohingya refugees in Indonesia seeking to return to Myanmar after landing in the Southeast Asian country. A Rohingya refugee in Indonesia spoke to Reuters about their desire to return home to Myanmar with full citizenship after recently landing in the Southeast Asian country following a treacherous journey from Bangladesh. They want to live with their right, with their right, by their right, with the fundamental right. It's okay. Everyone is trying to, everyone is telling, everyone is trying to repatriate, even try to go to our motherland. Go back to our motherland with a with a full citizenship, because uh, we are we are the we, we don't have place. I know they also need our help, and we can help. But when it comes to staying longer, we need to think twice. Even for us, it's already difficult to earn money. When it comes to supporting their daily life, especially, it's better to just look for their own people for help. The United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, said that 2022 could be one of the deadliest years at sea in almost a decade for Rohingya, who have long been persecuted in Buddhist-majority Myanmar. Yeah. Indonesia, and we have actually submitted... Many Rohingya have for years fled to neighboring states such as Thailand, Bangladesh, to Muslim-majority Malaysia and Indonesia. Anne Mayman, a country representative for UNHCR, called on these countries to assist with the resettlement of Rohingya refugees. At least two people died in violent protests at Nickel Smelter in Indonesia. Officials said two workers were killed in the clashes and rioting at the Indonesian nickel smelter at the weekend as hundreds of security personnel were deployed to maintain order after the protest over pain safety spiraled out of control. 
footage filmed by eyewitness Refi Lembong showed people in light-colored boiler suits, which she said were Chinese workers, wielding metal poles and clashing with Indonesian workers as tensions escalated at the PT Gunbunster Nickel Industry, GNI smelter, owned by China's Jiangsu Dalong Nickel Industry. The spokesperson for Central Sulawesi Police, Didik Supranato, said an Indonesian and a Chinese worker were those killed during the clashes and several company vehicles were torched and about 100 dormitory rooms were damaged. According to the National Police Chief, Listio Sigit Prabowo, the GNI launched the smelter in late 2021 with an annual capacity of 1.8 million tons, an estimated total investment of $2.7 billion. There were about 11,000 Indonesian workers at the GNI's plant and 1,300 foreign personnel. Xi Jinping exchanges Spring Festival greetings with Vietnam's Communist Party chief. General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee and Chinese President Xi Jinping and General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam Central Committee Nguyen Phu Trong sent congratulatory letters to each other on the coming Spring Festival, a traditional festival for both countries. She said China and Vietnam form a strategically important community of shared future and China regards Vietnam as a priority in its neighborhood diplomacy. China is willing to work with Vietnam to enhance alignment of their development strategies, deepen practical cooperation in various fields. Meanwhile, Trong expressed confidence that under the leadership of the CPC, the broadly Chinese people will successfully fulfill all the goals and vision set forth at the 20th CPC National Congress, build a modern socialist country in an all-round way and marched towards the realization of the second centenary goal. Trong said the Vietnam-China relationship is maintaining a positive momentum of development and has made important progress and willing to work with Xi to effectively implement the agreement and consensus reached during his visit to China. Trong wished the CPC continues to grow the People's Republic of China prosperity and the brotherly Chinese people happiness and peace in the new year. Chinese outlines its economic priorities at World Economic Forum. Chinese Vice Premier Liu He has outlined the top priorities of China's economic development for the coming year, stating the country will look to keep supply chains operating smoothly while stressing that China welcomes foreign investment. Liu made the remarks in a speech at the ongoing World Economic Forum annual meeting 2023 in the Swiss town of Davos. In 2023, we will uphold the general principle of making progress while maintaining stability and continue to follow a proactive fiscal policy and a prudent monetary policy. We will strive to maintain reasonable economic growth and keep prices and employment generally stable. According to the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs that Liu is attending the World Economic Forum as part of his five-day visit to Switzerland at the invitation of Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum and the government of the Swiss Confederation. Under the theme of cooperation in a fragmented world, this year's edition of World Economic Forum is focusing on public-private cooperation to find solutions to some of the world's most pressing challenges. United States and Japan sign historic agreement on space exploration. Secretary Blinken and Minister Hayashi. <laughs> Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken signed an agreement to cooperate on space exploration at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. in the presence of Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. Secretary Blinken said the framework agreement signed will take the cooperation between the both countries to new heights. Uh, the principles of diplomacy, democracy and discovery are the core cornerstones of the U.S.-Japan alliance. Our nations are both spacefaring nations nations poised to unlock the secrets of the universe. And today we are once again reaffirming that Japan and the U.S. explore openly, explore peacefully, and explore together. 
NASA plans to have Japanese astronauts as part of the Artemis mission to the moon. Thailand says China's border reopening to benefit all concerned parties. China reopens its borders, giving the green light for their citizens. The Thailand Minister of Public Health said Thailand welcomes China's reopening of flights for international travelers, which will benefit all the concerned parties in the long run. Anutin Chan Virakul, Thailand's Health Minister and Deputy Prime Minister, said in an interview with the Channel Global Television Network that China's reopening policy has been welcomed news in Thailand, especially for those in the country's tourism sector. We'll be excited to uh, welcome the increasing numbers of Chinese tourists. And uh, without a doubt, I believe that in this sector, the resurrection of uh, economy, of services business, and also the livelihood, the uh, things that used to be uh, as usual in the past that has disappeared for two to three years, will come back and make uh, all concerned parties uh, uh, beneficial. We consider that it should be the same as long as uh, the basic uh, situation in each country uh, is similar. For example, is China the only country now who uh, still have pandemic? Why should we uh, handpick on some particular countries and said we have to uh, apply extra measures on them. All decisions, all regulations that have been prepared and announced were mainly based on medical uh, assessment. While some countries have implemented stricter restrictions on inbound Chinese tourists, Thailand has decided to forego extra requirements for Chinese tourists entering the countries. Charm Virakul said that the decisions are made based on medical assessment and there is no reason for extra restrictions. Global Tourist Destination expects to reboot business with Chinese travelers return. Tourist destinations around the world are ready to welcome Chinese travelers back after three years' absence is finally coming to an end following the ease of Chinese border restrictions. As Chinese tourists are excitedly getting ready for their trips abroad, many countries, especially Southeast Asian countries that depend on revenue from tourism, are eager to greet them with decorations full of Chinese elements. Chinese reopening plan have also provided much hope and optimism for businesses in Thailand. In 2019, the nearly 40 million foreign tourists contributed to around 20% of Thailand's GDP, more than a quarter of which came from the Chinese mainland. Chinese tourist return is not only anticipated in the Southeast Asian countries, embassy and tourism authorities in France, New Zealand, Norway and many other countries have posted warm messages on Chinese social media platforms to welcome Chinese tourists. And that's the holdings for today, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you all sooner.